Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make one of my favorite recipes that I used to make all the time in college, my zesty homemade stir fry. Pretty much this recipe originated from me kind of getting tired of the food in the cafeteria at my college. I wanted to try something different when I was living in more apartment style living with a kitchen. I would normally grab a lot of these ingredients from the salad bar and then just need one or two extra ingredients from my own from the store and be able to whip this up. So I was able to still use my meal plan in college, but also be able to then make something fun and exciting. So today with my recipe, I will be starting with a base of quinoa and I'll be cooking that at a one to two ratio with bone broth. Um, I'm a big fan of bone broth right now. So I'll be doing one cup of dry quinoa to two cups of bone broth and just cooking that in a pot until it's completely absorbed. And then additionally for my main protein source, I'll be doing chicken breast today and I'll be seasoning that a little bit later. But this recipe, um, like I said, I make it all the, I used to make it all the time in college. And what I would normally do is I would sometimes have chicken breast I bought from the store, or I would also just a lot of times get uh, tofu from the uh, salad bar. So tofu is another great substitute um, along with using vegetable broth instead of that bone broth. So it's a great option for the vegetarians or vegans. All right, so I'm gonna get my quinoa going in the pot and then I'm also gonna cut up my chicken and I'll be back in just a second and then we will season the chicken. All right, so for four people, I'm doing just two chicken breasts. So it's just about a half chicken breast each. So then it's a nice serving portion, but I'm just gonna cut these up into little cubes and I'll be right back. So I am cutting these really small just because I do want them to cook fast because so, uh, I'm hungry. So I'm uh, cutting these pretty small. So cutting them into nice kind of about mm, close to maybe about one inch uh, wide from the actual breast and then cutting them down depending on it. And so making sure they're really small, kind of small chicken nugget size is the best way to say. But yeah, so I'll be cutting those down small. So today I'll actually be cooking my chicken breasts first, but if I was doing tofu, I'd actually be adding my tofu in after I sauteed my onions. But today we're gonna start with the chicken right in with the onions at the same Alrighty, time. Alrighty, so my chicken is all cut up into a nice bowl now. Pull out my handy dandy avocado oil, and then I'm just gonna add about one and a half, maybe two tablespoons of the oil. Yeah, I'll add two because I want a little extra oil to be in the pan. So that to the chicken, leave that in there. Alrighty. And I've washed my hands afterwards because you know, being safe. Next, we're gonna go over to our salt and pepper. Again, um, like in my last video, if you saw, I love salt and pepper, it's a simple base. So uh, I always love using Costco Kirkland Fresh Brown. the salt and again it's up to your liking I like to make sure there's a nice little coating of everything so um, something I learned while I was actually abroad in Italy was the importance of actually really putting most of your seasoning into your meat or rather protein so if you're using tofu that and then really not as much into your vegetables and your sauce and just letting that kind of be your base and then build from that. So that's why I am starting with that chicken or if you'd be doing tofu, adding that tofu pretty early to allow that seasoning to then spread out to the whole dish. All right, next we're gonna go into a bit of a dash of paprika. Um, dash for me is a full little coating. Give a good shake, all right. And then we're gonna then do a little bit of red pepper flakes. Uh, but just a little bit now, but we're gonna save these for our garnish later on. And then the real seasoning behind this one is cumin. So good, nice layering of that. And then we're just gonna really actually this time do a really small dash of hot paprika. We're actually just gonna do um, half a teaspoon actually. So half a teaspoon, it's a little extra, but it's all right that because it's not too hot it's just hot hot spicy but again like i said this is the zesty stir fry so you got to have that 
hot paprika into it. All right, so the chicken is all seasoned. Now, as you can see, it hasn't been tossed yet. I'm about to toss it. I'm also going to cut up my onion. I'm gonna cut it up into long kind of um, strips and I will show you the after product. I'm effectively cutting it like you would for ringlets for a hamburger bun, but then just cutting them in half. But then I'm gonna throw that all into my stir fry pan, throw it on the stove and get cooking with those. Okay, so also just wanna remind you real quick. Uh, so it's been about five to 10 minutes. So I can hear my quinoa starting to bubble a little bit. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a stir so it doesn't stick, but again, we're cooking it till all the bone broth is absorbed. So then uh, just checking on it occasionally, but I'll be spending a bit more time by the stove getting these starting to cook. All right, so I've just cut up my onion. So now you can see it really was just half an onion, but then now it's all these little like half ringlet things. So, ta-da. So yeah, so here's my pan. We're gonna give it just a nice little splish splash, just a quick, there we go. A little splash just to make, it coated, give it a nice little turnaround, make sure it's slightly covered, but again, we got that extra oil with the chicken. Throw it on, just get that base in. And then now throw my onion in at the bottom. Um, I am gonna throw my onion on for about a minute just to give it a little bit of time to uh, soften, and then I will add the chicken. But again, these things are gonna cook for a while. These things are gonna cook for a while, pardon me. Um, so I'm not too concerned about my onions staying too raw or not getting soft enough. The biggest thing is just making sure the chicken gets cooked. And so again, these are super small. Um, they're going to cook for maybe like, I'll cook them in the medium to high range for about five minutes, constantly turning them to make sure the outside is covered, getting, um, just make sure it looks cooked. And then if you need to, and I'm always the same, I like to make sure my chicken is fully cooked. So I'll just pull out a little piece, cut it up and double check. So we're going to throw this on the stove now. All right, so we've made it over to the stove now. As you can see, it's not too bad. I can touch it. The quinoa is starting to get, um, the, the liquid is starting to evaporate from the quinoa now. So that's gonna keep going. It's on medium, so I'm gonna turn it down below and just let that go, give it a couple stirs. But we have the heat on now in the middle and we have the onions in. I'm gonna pull out a wooden spoon. Don't wanna scrap up my pan. And we're gonna get to stirring and maybe bringing this up a little bit like to medium or so giving this a nice little bit of toss give it a minute or so to get nice and warm start to hear that little sizzling and then we'll add in our chicken all right so you can hear you can hear our onion is sizzling now and it's getting that nice translucent look a little bit getting a little soft so i'm going to add in my chicken now So it's on low heat now. We're gonna give it a couple minutes and keep stirring it. And then the quinoa is looking pretty close to being done. So I'm gonna give it one more quick stir and then just cover it to keep it warm and allow that final liquid to evaporate. All right, so it's honestly been just like one or two minutes and I'll show you the chicken. There we go. It's really, it's already starting to get that nice little outer layer cooked. I have cut up two bell peppers, a red and an orange one, as you see. You can cut them into strips or you can cut them just into small cubes. I also washed out a full can of garbanzo beans. So those two are all set to be added in along with the wet ingredients in just a couple more minutes with the chicken. So one struggle I always had in college when making this recipe was my broccoli. I would always put it in towards the end with the other vegetables, but it would always either cause me to overcook everything to have the broccoli done and everything be soggy or have the broccoli al dente. So what I do is I put the broccoli in a microwave stay full with a little bit of water on the bottom and throw it in the microwave for about a minute 30 just to get it that nice really bright green color so it can be added with the other vegetables at the right time so the broccoli is all done in here now i needed a couple extra seconds over that 130 but really not too much all right yeah so now you can see it's that really nice bright green got that nice steam on it so it's gonna go there but then i'm gonna add in my peppers just add them all in my washed garbanzo beans. Go. And then the broccoli. And also you can throw in that little bit of extra water. It's great to then have it all kind of steam together. Alrighty, there we go. All this is in, I'm gonna give it a quick toss. Oh, 
All right, so I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit. Earlier I was like, yeah, we seasoned the chicken and everything and that's main seasoning for the whole recipe, but there's a ton of vegetables in here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more cumin, and then a little bit more salt and pepper are gonna be our main things. But then additionally, I'm gonna add some sriracha and I'm gonna add some lime juice. And then for some reason there's enough liquid in here right now, but if needed, I'll add a little bit more bone broth. But then I did also a little bit of soy sauce just to give it a little oomph with that flavor. Uh, but yeah, so we'll put that all in together, close it up, leave it on a low simmer for about three to five minutes, check on it a little bit, and then it should be all ready to so, go. All right, so we toss in all the extra seasoning and dressing. I'm gonna add now the quinoa into it so then it can absorb some of that flavor on the bottom so it has some flavor as well. And then again, we're gonna cover it for that three to five minutes and then we'll come back and check back on it. Ready to go. Everything looks cooked. The broccoli looks done. The peppers look nice bent, but still crispy, and the chicken looks completely done. So now I'm just gonna plate it and then show you how to garnish it so you have it ready to serve. All right, so it is all finished and plated. As you can see, it comes out in really big portions. So it's nice so if you just wanna have a little bit now and have some leftovers, or if you're super hungry right now, so enjoy it all. But let's talk about how I garnish it. So pretty much I always, Finish it off with some red pepper flakes, a little bit of extra kick, um, and then you can add a little bit of sriracha. I'm not going to add that until I taste it. Uh, then also a little bit of soy sauce more if you want. I will know right now I do want some lemon, uh, some lemon, lol, some lime juice on top of it, and I will definitely want some chili garlic sauce on top. You know I will add this right away before I add any more sriracha. It's brand new, it smells so good. All right, just about one teaspoon of that. Just drizzle that on top. Oh my gosh, all right, maybe a little extra just cause again, it's a big serving, there's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna add that and ta-da, it is beautifully dished. If I had some fresh lime, I'd add that. Additionally, I love to add bean sprouts to this. Um, again, it's sometimes nice if you add a little too much spice, having that as a nice little cutter. But I'm gonna stir this up real quick and I'm gonna enjoy it. All right. It's so good and it tastes like cold, but in a good way, I promise. So many good memories, super spicy. So I'm gonna definitely need um, some water on the side, but I hope you enjoy this recipe and please comment below if you tried it out and let me know what you think. All right.